You are so lucky I'm president. That's all I can tell you. What's going on, good people? I go by the name of Cam, and today we're going to be talking about one of the number one questions for 2020. Donald Trump, Warren Buffett, who's got the right idea when it comes to investing in stocks in 2020? So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Warren Buffett, the CEO of the conglomerate Berkshire Hathaway, has outperformed the S&P 500 in 27 of the past 40 years. To put it simply, $1,000 invested with Buffett back in 1964 when he purchased Berkshire Hathaway at $11.38 a share would be worth more than $23 million. Check out the link in the bio if you want to see the data. But recently, Buffett has taken a more cautious approach when it comes to investing. So what does the so-called Oracle of Omaha, Nebraska think about investing in stocks in 2020? Well, we can simply look at his recent public comments to gain more insight into what Buffett is thinking. Recently, we learned that Berkshire Hathaway bought very little stock in the first quarter of 2020 because they thought, of all things, that the stock market was going down. Well, that says a lot. Additionally, Buffett said that Berkshire Hathaway sold all of his airline stocks, so that includes Delta, Southwest, American, and United. Furthermore, Buffett mentioned you shouldn't buy stock unless you expect to hold it for 10 to 30 years. Side note, this is probably a good point to point out that Buffett is an investor, not a trader. What's the difference? Investors more long-term buy and hold, traders more short-term. And lastly, never go all in on stocks. You wanna make sure you keep some cash on hand, AKA dry powder, because you never know when a good opportunity is gonna come up. So let's recap how we got here. As you all know, back in March 2020, the United States, along with several other countries, experienced a historic economic slowdown due to the stay-at-home orders aimed at preventing the spread of the coronavirus. This led to the highest number of unemployment claims since the Great Depression of the 1930s, government bailouts for many industries, which were larger than what we saw during the 2008 financial crisis, and some of the quickest ever declines in the stock market but all that seemed to change. All that seemed to change for some investors on Friday, June 5th, when the United States Department of Labor announced one of the most surprising employment reports ever. The report showed that over a one month span from April 2020 to May 2020, the US added over 2.5 million jobs. Now that's despite the ongoing financial crisis caused by the coronavirus. The unexpected rise in jobs left many investors and even economists shocked. On the same day, U.S. President Donald Trump wasted no American time to applaud the job back. growth as a sign that the worst was over and that the U.S. economic recovery had begun. We were very strong. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. We had the greatest economy in the history of the world. And that strength let us get through this horrible pandemic, largely through. I think we're doing really well. Opening with a bang. And we've been talking about the V. This is better than a V. This is a rocket ship. This is far better than a V. A V is wonderful. A V is this. They were talking about, will it be a V, a U, an L? They had no idea. So what should you do? Now, if you subscribe to my channel, you know that I got to leave you with some value. I got to leave you with some nuggets backed up by data. So here's what you should be thinking about when it comes to investing in stocks in 2020. The 2008 financial crisis. During the 2008 financial crisis, it took the S&P 500 five and a half years to rebound. So that rebound was actually helped by other parts of the world like China. And unlike the 2008 financial crisis, the majority of the world's economies are currently in recession or expected to be in recession by the end of the year. So that in the case, it's gonna take much longer this time around for things to rebound. There's currently no vaccine. And according to the World Health Organization, it could take over five years to get the virus under control. Next month, July, the additional $600 of weekly unemployment benefits end, unless there's an extension, which will mean that we'll probably start to see an increase in defaults on loans and things of that nature. Additionally, September 30th, that's when the payroll protection program ends. So then, starting on October 1, companies such as American Airlines, they can go ahead and start laying off additional employees, which by the way, they've already started to notify employees that their jobs will no longer exist come October 1. 
Which leads me to the next point. Loan defaults will likely rise. Now, if you look at the data, the latest Federal Reserve data doesn't yet show a significant rise in credit cards, auto loan, or student loan defaults. However, the latest data from the TransUnion Credit Reporting Agency indicates that that may be because of a spike in the number of loans in forbearance. So basically, lenders are giving customers a break on payments in hopes that they can get back on their payments soon. How long do you think that's gonna last? Lastly, upon further review of the data, of the 2.5 million jobs that were added, all of them, all of them were furloughed employees that were going back to work. No new jobs were added. And as a matter of fact, we actually saw an increase in the number of permanent job losses. So in conclusion, the financial downturn isn't over yet. If Warren Buffett isn't buying stocks, why should you? Whether you wanna be an independent thinker or not, the data doesn't support stock trading in this risk-off environment. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you like the content you've seen here today, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It really goes a long way to supporting our channel. Additionally, we try our best to simplify finance. So if you wanna get more of a daily update on some of the breaking news that's coming out, be sure to check out our Instagram profile at bswanfinancial. That's bswanfinancial. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.